Okay, today I'm going to show you what's required in order to prepare the box for your ARDF 80 meter receiver. So basically, all you need to do is uh, drill holes. So a hole for the sense antenna, a hole for the controls, for the uh, headphone socket and LED. Um, four little holes for the tactile switch, sense switch. And the only tricky problem is the holes for the ferrite rod assembly. Now these are quite large, 20 millimeters diameter you need. Um, so you can get a, a standard electrical grommet into that hole. So yes it's a little bit tricky but other than that I'll go into a bit more detail later about how I go about um, locating and drilling these holes. Now of course you'll need some tools, ruler, set square, um, a fine pen, some snips, something to mark the centres of the holes. Okay, and to drill the holes I use one of these, it's a stepped drill. This one goes from 4 millimetres to 20 millimetres. Now of course you can drill the smaller holes with a standard wood drill, but for the larger holes I find this the best method. So we use a standard Hammond um, ABS blocks. It's a very common size, so you might have one already in your own shack. One like this. Now this one here has got uh, ridges inside um, to take, PC, to take uh, PCBs. Now if you want to use one like this, um, you're going to have to remove some of these ridges in the area of the ferrite rod assembly to, in order to produce the holes and to be able to get the grommet in the uh, in the hole so you can take those out with a sharp narrow chisel but it's best really if you could get This version here, which has got plain sides, and all you need to do on this box initially to prepare it is to snip out the the plastic standoffs. So you can do that quite easily by using just a small snip and just snip them out. like so. You need to do that also on the on the uh, the lid of the box but this has got no holes so we can put that aside. Okay this is a a drawing showing the location of all the holes and to make life a little bit simpler we've measured everything from the center line of the box and that's because these boxes have got uh, nice rounded corners and edges and there's a slight draw on the on the boxes also so the the bottom is slightly smaller than the top which makes it very difficult to, to sort of find a good edge to work from when you are measuring so first of all you need to do is locate the center. You can just do it by measuring and halving the height and the length or another quick way is just to find the center by drawing some diagonals from the corners. So once you've done that you can then set out all the positions of your 
holes um, using your set square and um, measuring off the centre lines of the box. Now here's one I've done earlier with all the hold positions marked on the box. It's just worth noting at this point that there are two versions that I produced of the printed circuit board. So this one here uses a very cap diode for tuning, so it's got a, a potentiometer. This one here uses a variable capacitor for tuning. And there's a very slight difference between in the dimensions between the two controls. So just be aware of that, it is marked on the drawing. Also this um, version, you need a smaller hole for the tuning, uh, six millimeter against 10 millimeter. Okay, as I said before, really it's quite straightforward. You obviously got, it's worth rechecking the positions of the holes before you actually drill them. But um, the most difficult one to drill is the 20 millimeter hole, 20 millimeter hole that you need for the ferret rod assembly. So once you've set it out, do make sure you go and check that you've got similar dimensions or the same dimensions on both sides of the of the box because you want these to be aligned um, perfectly in this direction so that um, you can take bearings without any errors and um, also if you don't get the alignment right in this direction um, it, it doesn't look too good now, the thing is, if you do get these holes in the wrong place, and they don't need to be very um, far out uh, for it to be quite noticeable, is there's nothing much you can do with the box except throw it away. Now, as I said before, I use a stepped drill to produce this hole. But even though I have in the past clamped these, the box and the, the drill in a drill stand, I find it's very, very difficult to stop the thing sort of drifting slightly off the centre line of the box as you drill. So what I do is to mark the limits of the hole. So there's a 20 millimetre square there drawn. Um, that gives you a reference so you can keep an eye on where your your hole is being uh, developed so as you drill down through this hole with ever increasing size if you if you see the thing drifting slightly off uh, you can just apply a little bit of side pressure to bring it back to the correct position. Another method I've used in the path is to perhaps stop drilling the hole before you uh, get to the full 20 millimeter size and then just um, finish off with a, a round file. So there we go. Well what I'll do is now I'm going to go out into the garage and finish off all the, uh, the drilling of these holes and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we uh, assemble the printed circuit board into it. Okay, well, here is the completed box with all the holes drilled and the marking out lines all removed. So that's looking pretty good. And one thing I discovered when I went out to the garage to drill the hole was something I've forgotten was that I had already uh, these 
um, special drill, they're called centre drills and they've got a little pilot um, drill um, and they're meant to be self-centering. Anyway, they produce a really nice cut through this plastic, um, much cleaner than you'll get with uh, a wood screw. So you can get these in sets. Um, I've got uh, four millimeters up to 10 millimeters. And um, along with the stepped drill, uh, you can get them at very reasonable prices from on eBay. So well worth getting if you think you're going to do a lot of drilling into plastic or aluminium sheet and the like. Anyway, that's the box completed. The, uh, the printed circuit board just um, fixes through the control knobs and the whole should align for the LED. One thing you might have noticed on my previous example, um, I had the mic output, so not the mic, the headphone socket on the center line of the box, but it's much better if it's offset slightly away from the tuning knob. Now, before you put the antenna assembly into the box, there's a couple of things you might need to do. So, looking at the box, what I've done here is to put on some shielding round uh, the ferret rod assembly um, on both sides. And obviously you'll need to put this in before you put your uh, antenna in. Now what I've used here is uh, slug tape, which is copper. It's... Um, you know, for gardeners really, for keeping slugs out, slugs out of uh, um, flower pots and the like. But um, you could use a tin foil, um, aluminium foil. Um, now, to be honest, I'm not sure whether putting this in actually helps you, but in theory, it should uh, uh, make the null um, more pronounced. So. Anyway, uh, you can do it or not do it. Now I did say earlier that there was um, nothing to do on the, the lid apart from snipping out the plastics uh, standoffs. But what you might have to do is just nibble out a section of this uh, a flange here so that um, the lid fits around the uh, the the grommets now just backtracking a little bit regarding the sleeving and fixing it into the grommets uh, you'll find it's a good fit but it it will rotate so once you've got the sleeving into the correct position you really need some means of preventing it rotating and slipping in this direction. So what I do is you just cut a little slot into the grommet at that position there. You can see this needs to be cut with a, a modelling knife. Uh, where are we going? Here we go. There we go. You can see there. And then with the sleeving in the correct position, you just to drill a hole into the sleeving uh, with a one millimeter diameter drill. And then using a, a header pin, just one obviously, um, push that into the hole. And um, you obviously need to trim the length of the the pin so that it doesn't project inside the the sleeving so 
Here's an example of one that's completed. See how near I can get that for you. And um, you can see that it's a good, it's well fixed. It won't twist or slip. What um, I'll do in a separate video is show you how to assemble this uh, ferrite rod um, tube and wind the coils etc and um, it won't be like this this was just a prototype but I got a lot better method of um, winding that coil so take a look at that when it's um, been posted until then Thanks. Bye for now.